Hi, sewing friends. Welcome to my sewing room. Today we're making a pillow sham. Last time I filmed a video, I did the churn dash block, and I thought I would take that churn dash block and make it into something that went along with my vintage quilt. All the steps for making this pillow sham are in the video. I start out with just this small patchwork center, and then as we go along, I give you more supplies that you'll need. I'm sorry I didn't mention the backing or the batting, but you'll, if you watch the video, you'll catch on. All right, let's get started. This is what you're going to need to make your vintage inspired pillow sham. Last video, I showed how we make the churn dash block. So you'll need six of those. Then you're going to need two six and a half inch squares. I think I'll set these over here. Then you're going to cut two 11 inch squares. And this is what they look like before you, after you cut them up. So there's my 11 inch square that I cut into four triangles. Here's the other 11 inch square that I have trouble figuring out how this goes. There we go. That I cut into more triangles for the corners. All right. There we go. <laughs> so that's my 11 inch square that has been cut up to make these things. So I had it all laid out, and I think I'm going to lay it out again to show you how we sew all that together. Oh, and you also need, or you might want some muslin or cream or white, whatever is in your blocks, to go around the outside to make this pillow sham a little bigger. I have this piece that I'm going to cut into strips after we have our uh, quilt blocks sewn together. So let's lay this out. These blocks are on point, so they're standing sort of on their point in our pillow sham. And I'm going to lay them out so that I can show you how we're going to sew these together. And we had two little squares to go in the center here. So I kind of liked alternating the reddish pinks with the blues. So lay it out how you want it to look. And it's nice if you can have a place for it to sit while you're working. And I think we have all of our pieces down there now. So now we're going to think about how we sew this together. So what I like to do is I like to start on one end and we're going to start right here with these three and we're going to sew these three together and I'm going to match the point of the triangle with the corner of my block and I'm going to sew those two together and then I will do the same with this. Then when I get to the next row I'm going to start here probably, put that point next to that corner, this square will fit and then we'll wait on this, the corner pieces till the end. All right, let's go to the sewing machine and start sewing these together. All right, my blocks are ready to go. They're right next to my sewing machine, and I'm going to begin by sewing the rows together, and I'm going to be sewing them in rows diagonally. So let's start with the first one. Putting the corners together. using a quarter inch seam. And here you have a little leftover on the edge and that's good, we want that. So the next one goes on like this, corner to corner, and we're going to sew that one together. Thank you. 
and I'm going to do the same thing all the way across and I'm going to leave these little triangles off to the side for right now. We're not going to put those on quite yet. So let's put all the rows together. I have all my rows sewn together. I have four rows of quilt blocks and the corners. Now I'm going to sew those rows together. We're going to start here, pin the seams, and sew that together. Let's see. It's sometimes tricky working around the camera and trying to get you a, a good view of what's going on. So I'm going to pin the seams and this should be about like that. You're going to have that little tail hanging off. We will trim that later. So let's start on this side and sew that. can trim this little tail off right now so that's not there and take my pins out and let's go to the next row make sure that it's sitting right before you go ahead and that's the way that should look so let's put the right sides together and pin the seams Next, we're going to put the four corners onto our little pillow sham. So take your triangles and just arrange it just like that. And sew those on the four corners. And you will have some little pieces here to trim off, and that's fine. All right, it's all together, and I have taken a ruler and straightened all the edges of my little pillow sham here. It's 18 wide, and it is 26 long. So I want to add a couple of inches to make it just a little bit bigger and to frame it. So I cut some two inch strips of muslin, and I'm gonna add these to the sides. And what I'll do is I won't measure, my strips are too long, longer than I need, and I'll just pin it here, sew it on, and do that all the way around. All right, my little quilted pillow sham is, the top is all together now. And now I have three layers. I wanna quilt this so it kind of matches my old vintage quilt. So I found a piece of batting and cut it just a little bit bigger than my little pillow top, an uh, inch or two bigger. And then I have some backing here from an old sheet because this is going to be inside the pillow. This can be fabric that you, you know, you just don't care about. And you don't want to pay good money for that fabric that's going to be hiding inside the pillow. This is my old quilt right here that I'm trying to fashion the pillow after. 
and I don't know if you can see, but the quilting lines are diagonal and then they're straight. So they went straight through here and then they did some diagonal lines that way. And I thought it would be fun to try to do that. And this quilter, a long time ago, did not really follow the, um, sometimes, you know, you follow the quilt block and you try to stay sort of at a similar place on the block. But this quilter quilted lines that aren't really um, following the block. They're just, let's see, one and a half inches apart, both straight across and on the diagonal. So I'm going to try to do that here with my little pillow sham. And I think to do that, first you need to get this sandwich together so we can either pin it or spray it. And I think I'm going to use a spray based method and get this basted together and then we're going to quilt it. My quilt sandwich is all ready to go and I have some painter's tape here that I'll be doing the diagonal lines using this to guide me. It's one of my favorite ways to mark a quilt. It's super easy. So I put it right next to this seam and I'll be following on either side of this tape and then I'll move the tape as I go, moving out from the center both directions. Let's get started on quilting those diagonal lines. So we have our diagonal lines in and now I want to make straight lines through the middle and I'll just use these points of the um, little squares as my guide for my tape. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start somewhere in the middle and on either side of that tape I will sew some quilting lines using a little bit bigger stitch. My machine says three and a half. And if your machine uh, has a walking foot, you can use a walking foot. This machine, this Juki I have, seems to do fine with just my regular foot. Sometimes I use a walking foot, but today it's working out, so I'm just using my regular foot, and let's get those lines in. All right, all of our quilt lines are in. I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think it looks really pretty and it looks similar to my original vintage quilt here. The quilting lines going diagonally and then straight through here. So this will be a fun pillow sham to put on top of that vintage quilt. So let's trim our pillow sham and then we'll get work on the back. So the front of our pillow sham is all done. It is 21 and a half inches going this way and 29 inches going the long way. And I want to put a back on it, a sort of a envelope style pillow sham with an opening in the middle. So I cut two pieces of fabric. They are both 21 and a half inches going this way. And they are 19 inches going the other direction. So they'll fit like this, overlapping. And what I want to do now is show you that I just want to fold this once and twice, press, for this one and then we're going to sew along that line and then the same goes for the other. You fold it, I'm folding it about one inch 
a big fold. You wouldn't have to do a big fold. You could do a little, you could just turn the edge in and have that be thin. But I want mine a little bit wider for whatever reason. And press that and then we will sew along this line right here so that the raw edges are all inside. The last thing we need to do is to add the backing to our pillow sham. Here's the first side of the back of our pillow. I put the hem in that half and I lay it face down onto my pillow sham. And then I want to put the other one face down. And then I need to pin all the way around this so that we can sew it on. So the edge around all the way around. And then we will sew all the way around this. And that is it for our pillow sham to match our vintage quilt. You can see the back has a little envelope opening to put your pillow in. And I'm going to have fun using that on my guest bed very soon. Thanks for joining me.